Hey, greetings, Fred in Alaska. Out here playing in the snow. Uh, we got a little bit here. Just wanted to come down and check out the icing on the Little Susitna River. See what it's looking like. Hold on a second here. You can see it's starting to glaciate all along and through here. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful out here. Treacherous as hell though, you don't wanna be in that cold water. Let me go to where it's a little quieter. Uh, this is the same vantage point I filmed at a while back. I just wanted to see it pre uh, full ice cube. I'll get another reference somewhere near future. It's a it's a balmy 16 degrees. I know you're jealous. Uh, not everyone can live in that kind of heat wave and tolerate it. Uh, uh, I'll be back with you shortly. It's just super loud here, and if anyone has to tinkle. It'd make it hard to watch. Talk to you shortly. Hey, greetings. I'm back. Uh, found a much quieter place. Uh, cold as hell out here. Uh, a little warmer where I'm at now. It's 23 degrees. Uh, what I wanted to share with you, uh, two buddies. Uh, uh, well, first, uh, there's going to be hats available. Check the website. Uh, they'll be available through the, the store at the website soon. Um, Let's see, that's at subarcticalaskasasquatch.com. Um, see what else is there? Uh, nothing else I could think of at the moment. Anyway, so what I wanted to uh, share with you guys, uh, Spencer and Max shared with me. They had been going to this place, and uh, this particular place is north of here. Um, it's just just as you're getting up towards Denali National Park. Um, they didn't say exactly where, they just said up that way. And this particular place they would go and been going there since they were little kids. Uh, they're in their 60s now, but uh, their first time going there uh, was back in the 70s. And where they, where they went, it, it kind of opens up into the muskeg and kind of swampy areas and tundra. There's not a whole lot of big trees up that way. There's more scrub brush and things of this nature. And there's a few pockets of the black spruce and whatnot, like I've showed you guys uh, in the muskeg and whatnot. So where they were going, it kind of opens up and the way the, the marsh flows is kind of like in a big extended Z kind of shape, right? And on their left hand side going in was this ridge. Now, their first experiences back in the 70s, they, they seen shadows up on this ridge when they were going back, checking this area out. It was new to them and they were exploring and they were trying to find a place no man had been, you know, which isn't all that hard to do in Alaska. You can go into a lot of places where no one's been. But anyway, so when they get back to the farthest point of this kind of Z-shaped muskeg area, the ridge only runs about half of it and then it drops back down and then it opens back up to other trees and, and brush up at the end where they were going and when they get there they found camping equipment and the camping equipment they found seemed fresh everything was there so they decided oh well maybe that's the shadow we saw was whoever's camping here is just kind of keeping an eye on us to make sure we don't steal his stuff so they screamed out hey we're just here we're just hiking you know blah blah we're trying to be the only ones here or whatever and so they turn around and they go back and on the right hand side is where this ridge is now and as they're coming up to it <coughs> uh max notices that dark shadow again and it, it they thought it was a black dog because all they saw was just this little bit of black would show itself a little bit of black so they assumed at the distance it was a dog jumping or you know a black lab or something of that nature and so they were trying to whistle for it they stopped they waved they they screamed out again hey we're, we're just hiking through we didn't touch your stuff you know that type of thing just to because they still assumed it was whoever was 
hanging out in the tent and uh they said the campsite was empty and it looked fairly recent like someone was there so they didn't you know they kept their distance and anyway so they're hollering out and they keep whistling trying to get the attention of the dog now they decided to continue walking because they started getting a creepy feeling and the whistles max did were imitated back almost identically moments later as they continued down along where the muskeg meets kind of where those rise starts and uh, it's basically right at the tree line and, and there's a little bit of black spruce and whatnot and you know similar things you see here going up up the side of this ridge and so as they're talking they keep hearing this almost identical whistle that max was doing it was just a short little two chirp whistle trying you know just something short and simple but it was being mimicked back to them and they thought okay the camper is teasing us trying to scare us out of here to keep us out of here so they kept their cool and they kept on walking and they finally got back to the beginning of the z and then the trail that they took would lead back over to the road where they had parked and they can go on about their way <coughs> as they're about half the distance from where the big z of the muskeg and everything ended back to the you know on this trail to get to where they parked their truck um it was actually Max's dad's truck they were using. They were a lot younger at the time. They hear almost an imitation of a conversation. They, they said it sounded made up, like gibberish, basically. And uh, I asked them, was it similar to any of that samurai chatter or whatever? And they said, you know, it was just too far. We couldn't make it out. We thought the campers were getting a good laugh at, oh, yeah, those idiots, they, they, they're they scared. You know, they're not coming back. And, and they were... They got a little freaked out, but they were unfazed by that. Well, jump ahead 10 years. Uh, they stopped going to that particular place because of the camper. And um, let me preface that by saying the first couple times they went to this spot, they didn't make the full Z because in reality, it's good three miles to make this, this whole journey on this, you know, this Z-shaped area of Muskeg, right? So, actually, I guess it would be a reverse Z. Yeah, it would be a reverse Z. So, anyway. Now, 10 years later, they decide, hey, let's see if anyone has been regularly going back to that spot. And let's go check it out. Well, uh, Spencer had a child on the way. Max, uh, he, you know, he was still single dude or whatever. And, uh their first trip they didn't bring any guns this trip uh they they were all oh bear with me here forgive me scammers so uh spencer wasn't going unarmed and max you know he was going along with his buddy he wasn't going to go unarmed either so they each had a, a, a shotgun each and spencer had a 44 on his hip so this being in the 80s, uh, they, uh, Max had a three-wheeler, and so they decided, hey, we'll, we'll ride. You could ride on the Spencer, would ride on the back, and Max would drive the three-wheeler, and they would make better time getting back in there, and they had assumed by now it would be a well-used place. <laughs> they get back in there, and they cut across the trail that kind of went up to the beginning of this reverse Z shape, and... Uh, things were a little bit different you know the brush was a little more there was a little it was a little denser in areas and you know it was a little swampier in others and so they were just kind of making note of how it changed and just kind of chopping it up you know um, and they, they hadn't even loaded their shotguns they just had them and they had a couple rounds each in their pockets uh, the only thing fully loaded was the 44 on Spencer's hip and and he's riding on the back rack of this three-wheeler facing towards the back while Max is riding it in the front now, as, as they stop having this conversation and they continue on because they had stopped because Spencer had out nudged him and was pointing out a sinkhole and some other things that he was noticing as they were chopping it up. And so they continue on and three wheelers, when you're on the back and you got the muffler right underneath you, um, the fumes can be a bit much when you get bogged down and you're going slower. If you're moving fast enough, it, it doesn't phase you. But sometimes when you slow down, the, those vapors get you right in the face. So Spencer was getting kind of just like, ugh, I, he couldn't deal with the exhaust. So 
he asked Max to let him off, you know, so he stopped, he hopped off, and he goes, go, go ahead and take the trail, you know, make a trail or whatever, and I'm going to catch my breath, get some fresh air, get that exhaust off my lungs, you know, and continue on. Max was like, cool, you know, because he's been wanting to open up with this little Honda three-wheeler and uh, really play around in the Muskeg. So Max takes off, you know, he didn't need a second, you know, chance to even reconsider. He was gone. So as Spencer's walking along, he's just catching his breath, kind of just reacquainting himself with the area and just kind of looking around and looking off in the distance across the Muskeg and everything. Uh... Max had made it around the bend that bends around to the left on this reverse Z, right? Now, remember, this is a beginning to end. It's, a, it's roughly about three miles, so it's a, it's a nice, decent, big open area. It's, they weren't tied up against, you know, each side of this spot or whatever. <laughs> well, Spencer's walking along, and he starts getting the eebie-jeebies. Uh, and he's listening to the motor. He, you know, Max hangs to the left. And just as Max is out of sight is when the real heebie-jeebies just really kicked up hard. And so he unslings this 12 gauge and he, he puts in some uh, buckshot loads. That's all he had was buckshot and a couple bird shots, something like that. Just some random stuff. And, and he loads it up and he slings it back over his shoulder and he double checks his 44 and he, he's trying to shake this feeling of just the creeps. And so he stops and he turns around and he's looking all up and down this, this ridge and there's this shadow up on this ridge and it's moving back and forth that first in between a couple trees and then in the bushes and then it continues moving on and he notices that how fast it's moving it'd be really hard to be moving that fast through that thick of brush and he's trying to wrap his mind around how is that dark thing moving so fast without making any noise and all of a sudden it's just gone out of his view and so he was like well that's must have been why i was getting the creeps i wonder if that's a hermit that's living back over there, you know, where they where they saw the tent 10 years before. Maybe the guy scouted the area and now he's got a, a permanent camp back there because it's not unheard of. And so now he's really intrigued and worried about Max because Max is out of his view and he no longer hears the motor running. So he immediately starts trotting. Now understand, uh, muskeg is just basically moss, like a, a moss waterbed. You got marsh underneath, you got all this thick tuff of, of just growth and vegetation that's basically like a big waterbed. And so uh, he's at the edge of it, so it's still pretty firm, but he's still running in moss, which it, it absorbs all your impact. So you put a lot of effort into moving, kind of like walking through sand, okay? And so uh, it's just a bit different. Anyway, so he starts moving along faster to get up to see why he's not hearing max and this movement was going that same direction now max was a good 250 yards before he had to turn at this point so spencer realizes you know he's got a, a good little distance to get there to check on his buddy and he's thinking well crap he didn't load his shotgun either and i don't hear the the machine i hope he's okay i hope you know someone didn't put out a wire to stop people from ripping you know because that's not unheard of either people running fishing line or hooks or something across trails to keep kids or anyone from riding through an area they consider theirs. So he was thinking about these things as he was like, oh man, I hope it's not like that. I hope Max is all right. So he, you know, he's definitely picking up the pace. And as he's just about to come in, uh, and get Max into view, he hears three shots from a shotgun. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. And then he hears, grr, grr. And, and so he gets in the view of Max and he starts yelling, hey, 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 what are you shooting at? What are you shooting at? And Max is pointing up the ridge because it's it's kind of like an L shape where they're at. And remember, it goes down where they're, the direction they were heading and then it opens back up. So basically he was shooting back up the ridge and Max keeps pointing up and, and he's at a distance of about 75 yards where he still can't hear what Max is saying and Max is frantic. He's trying to kick start this three-wheeler and it's not starting, it's flooded out. Uh, Spencer could, uh, Spencer's telling him that from a distance, it's flooded, it's flooded. You know, cause you could hear it when he was trying to crank on it and, and Max is freaking. And so he's worried about why these shots are up there. He's wondering, it's probably up there. And so, He's trotting up there, he's trotting up there, and now he's, Spencer's winded. Uh, he's always been a heavy set guy, right? So he's super winded, he's trying to catch his breath. Max is like, I'm out of ammo, it's up. It's right up there, it's standing by that, the, that brush up there. 
And Spencer's like, what are you talking about? And he looks up and there's this dark spot. Just like the one he saw just back around the corner up on that same ridge. And the black spot moves off real fast, real quiet. It just moves off. And not a clear view, it was just dark shadow. You know, I mean like a pitch black shadow up on the ridge. So Max is freaked, he, he, you know, he's like, it was a Bigfoot, it was a Bigfoot. You know, it was right over there, it stood up and then it squatted down when I shot at it. And, and Spencer's like, you shot, did you shoot it? And he goes, no, I shot at it, I shot up that way to try to scare it off and all it did was squat down and keep looking at me, I, it's still looking at us. So, you know, Spencer starts looking around really hard up on this ridge and he, he guesstimated it was probably a 60 foot height difference to the top of this ridge. Uh, he said he could be over exaggerating that by a smidge. So he said probably 45 to 60 foot tall little little ridge. It was basically a small hill rise that was went up sharp on the one side, right? And so as he's looking around and everything, he's he's not he can't focus his mind. He keeps looking and, and just darting his eyes back and forth. Meanwhile, Max is still kicking on that three-wheeler and asking him if he has any more shells in his pocket. And, you know, as he's looking around, he, he searches, he finds two more, two more rounds, hands it to him, says, don't just fire indiscriminately. Let's get the wheeler started and we'll, we'll ride out of here. Calm down. And he goes, no, you don't understand, Spencer. It was a Bigfoot. It was standing when I shot. And then it squatted down to like a quarter of, out what size it was and he goes a quarter how how does that get down to a quarter of a size he says, look I don't know but that dark spot you saw was about a quarter of the size it was when it was standing up so Spencer's kind of confused he's not he's not seeing anything that Max saw he saw the dark movement but he didn't he didn't see all that so he's freaked out along with Max just because of how terrified his buddy is they've known each other since they were little he believed Max. He didn't doubt Max one iota. It, it was just, he was thrown off by how intensely fearful Max was. And usually Max is the, you know, the adventurer, the take chances kind of guy. And so as he's hands him the rounds and he's focusing back up on this hill, he notices the dark shadow again, way at the top, almost out of view, almost like 10 years before when they thought they saw a black lab they saw he saw a black movement a black shadow just kind of just kind of bouncing along up at the top and at this point in the day it was silhouetted so it, w it was seemed to be a little darker than it was before um, as far as the silhouette now uh, Max got the three-wheeler running and did a small u-turn and pulled up and was telling trying to tell him again as I was riding along I was looking up the hill because I kept hearing something over the sound of the motor and Spencer was like that had to have been loud because I heard you you know a couple hundred yards away back around the corner there and he goes yeah it was it was a, a growl I felt above and beyond the vibration of riding in the tundra he said he felt this growl travel through him that's what caught his attention he turned and looked stalled out the the three-wheeler and loaded what rounds he had and shot up the hill it squatted down Spencer comes around the corner a moment later and he's trying to start the wheeler and and, and so on so they they talk it out for a minute and uh, Max tells him look it's moving it's moving again and Spencer looks in the direction he was looking before and then Max had to point out no right up there behind us so the way this place uh, sloped down where the ridge was ending there was a bunch of brush there what max was pointing to was that dark shadow seemed to be down at the bottom in the brush just poking his head up every once in a while poking his head up immediately spencer saw that and he said that uh every hair on his body went just tried to run away from his skin um he said it, it was just wire hard standing on end and uh everything changed and i when i asked him was it a change in the air? And he goes, no, it, it was a change in, in me. I, I I understood I can't be here. And I was like, I asked him, I was like, well, you know, some people speak on my speak. He said, no, no, I knew, I, I just knew nothing, no voices in my head, but I just knew I couldn't be there. It, it was in me, I knew it. And I was like, I, you know, I, I can't argue that. I understand what he's saying. Um, so what ends up happening is is this dark shadow 
<coughs> starts moving in the brush every time it pops its head up it's it's a little closer it's still at about 50 60 yards but each time it pops up it looks to be about 10 feet closer roughly and they're both just just freaking out and max stalls the three-wheeler again now um those original three-wheelers uh well he had the 250r which if anyone remembers those three-wheelers had clutch you know five speed it was made for racing not bogging but it anyway so he stalled out again and before he started cranking on it again spencer said don't flood it again this thing is still coming so spencer unholsters his 44 and shoots at the brush behind it past it just trying to make noise to scare this thing Sh shoots two times boom boom this thing stops moving and tears off up the hill so instead of coming forward it just poof, it was gone they heard it crack boom 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 just breaking through everything on its way they barely saw it through the brush and it was gone uh he said his feeling of fear kind of left with it once it cleared the rise <clears throat> and max restarts it and they they go on now the direction it was going was the direction they had to turn and go but at a little bit of a different angle so spencer was hoping and once they got back around where this little reverse z ended and the trail back over to the truck was that it wasn't going in an intercept it, that it was going a different direction he, he was fairly certain they they were clear of each other's paths out of there right. raving off in the distance anyway so they go around the corner and they get back about to where Spencer initially jumped off. Now, uh, when they got to that point uh, where he had pointed out where there was a, a mushy spot of uh, water welling up and whatnot, they noticed in that spot, uh, which wasn't there just half hour, 40 minutes before, however long it was, not, not a whole huge amount of time, one of the trees, uh, one of the small black spruce had been ripped out of the ground and turned upside down in that and uh they he said when they came up to that point they they both looked at it and they both like almost simultaneously looked at each other and said we gotta go now like they didn't understand what it meant but they felt that something was off very bad and so they you know they hauled ass out of there as they're about half three quarters way back to the truck on this trail at that time uh it was it was open there was a lot of dead grass and stuff so all the green vegetation kind of like now there's a lot less green vegetation and it's just skeletal you know trees and whatnot and especially the brush the smaller stuff and he notices in front of them between them and the truck there's a dark shadow moving off off trail real low to the ground almost pitch black tearing off away and off to their right so immediately uh, the way he's sitting kind of side saddle on this three-wheeler when he notices this he he grabs max shoulder and max said i saw it i saw it it's moving it's moving as they go up the trail they notice some tracks and the tracks were from one side to the other side he said it was approximately six foot wide there and uh the ground was still partially uh moist from some previous rains the week before and he said it looked like two huge footprints one on one side and the you know one on the opposing side but the the distance was six feet and, and you know looking at that that's not a great distance someone up on you know because each side was on a rise you know what i mean so someone jumping from one side to the other i, I could see that happening you know um so you know, that doesn't necessarily say anything. However, everything together, you know, he assumed it was the Bigfoot tracks. They, they looked at him briefly, finished going up the trail. When they got to the truck, they were looking off, you know, to see if they could see any movement or whatever because they wanted to get the wheeler loaded up and get the hell out of there because uh, Max wasn't gonna leave it. And so as they're pulling out their little makeshift ramp uh, to get it loaded up in the truck, they get it dropped and when it when it hit the gravel it kind of made this kind of sound uh, like anything heavy hitting gravel you know and immediately after that 
they heard a very similar sound from just off the gravel pad where they parked down in the brush. They heard almost, it was like, and then back behind them. They immediately turn and look and they see, they don't see anything. So they're really creeped. Uh, Max jumps on a four wheeler, stalls it again, floods it again, right? Uh, just, just way panicked. Spencer's like, you man the gun, calm down. Keep the gun pointed in that direction. Let me deal with the flooded motor. We'll, we'll kick start, I'll kick start it. I'll, I'll get it up there. Just, dude, calm down. You know, we're okay. We're, we're at the truck. Let me just, I'll handle this for you. Just calm down. So Max gets off. He grabs the 44 from him and he comes and stands on the other side of the truck in between the, the truck and the ditch where the sound came from. So uh, he's standing there uh, about 10 feet from the truck and, and just kind of scanning back and forth at the brush. And Spencer gets it started. And as Spencer rips around, turns around to come up the ramp, get a little bit of speed, um, as he comes up on top, of the, on top of the tailgate, just as he clears everything just off to his right at about uh, 2 o'clock position from if the truck was at 12 noon, right about the two o'clock position, this big black thing stands up behind the brush and he could see all the head, part of the shoulder and most of the body just on it, it would be its right hand side. And when he got up there, he, he just froze up. He had he was uh, had the clutch held in, he was wrapping it out real loud um, and, and stuck staring at this thing standing right over there. Uh, he said it was less than 30 yards away and it was just like right over there and he wasn't even realizing what he was doing. He had that clutch gripped and he was just full throttle, just bah, 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 bah. Max had jumped up and hit the kill. And if anyone has ever hit a kill switch when you're wrapped out like that, it, it's, it doesn't immediately die, it's just bah, blah, 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 you know. And as soon as it did die, the creature standing over there imitated the last couple blurps and sounds of the engine noise almost identically just in a deeper note and immediately they they both gathered themselves got in the truck and Spencer was gonna shoot at this thing like to shoot it and when they jumped in the truck it hadn't moved it's still standing there Spencer rolled down the window and he grabbed the shotgun and he put the shotgun out the window and was resting it on the mirror to get a good shot and Max touched him and Max said, don't, don't, don't do that. So he listened to his buddy. They backed out of there. They, he said they did a 20 point turnaround. Um, not that they didn't have enough room. It's just, they were keeping a gun on this thing hundred percent the whole way. And every time Max would pull forward a little, almost to where, uh, Spencer didn't have a beat on it. He would say, stop here. And then, you know, it, it was all to keep a gun sight on this thing because they were so freaked out and in the big scheme of things uh it, it outside of some creepy movements and some imitations it didn't really it didn't really do anything um that loud growl and i mean in the big scheme of things uh it didn't outwardly try to attack them um it didn't necessarily try to run them off but just the the whole situation um it's creepy as hell you know uh seeing a shadow up on a rise moving like that and you know with the history and everything oh and, and something uh they went back uh three years later with four people and they went and they made it it was quiet and uh, birds singing it, nothing happened the whole trip they made it all the way back to where they had saw that tent like 15 years before or whatever it was and that whole area looked just the same i mean identical the the same tent everything cut well outside of it being a little more disheveled from weather and all that um the same campsite was there uh <clears throat> whoever had had it abandoned it or missing who knows uh they reported it but who knows whatever came of that you know i mean how many tents does people come across in woods in alaska probably quite a bit but uh yeah so again hats coming soon at the web store um oh 
I'll try to get all that worked out with Dave and um, all that here soon with the next couple days. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.